This is the Mecca of all Meccas, the homecoming, the greatest time of all. All of your girlfriends will get together, travel up to the beautiful Rocky Mountains, and spend two fabulous days praising and worshiping and <laughs> studying and crying and eating candy and doing skits and hiking in the mountains and walking on the prayer circle and eating food and it doesn't get any better than this <laughs> this is how much i love i absolutely loved and lived for and i felt like this is my super bowl this is my new year's you know this was my annual reset it was like it was it was amazing <laughs> but <laughs> After a year of nothing but tragedy, what do you do for a retreat? <laughs> Faith can feel like hearts and butterflies until someone lights a match and burns it all to the ground. Welcome to the Burning Butterflies podcast. The sad thing is, is that there's abuse of every kind within the church, um, but the spiritual abuse is the stuff that just... Well, it's a place there shouldn't be abuse. Like, there just shouldn't be abuse in a place that claims Jesus. Well, and it'll, it just, it ruins your soul. If you're new here, we suggest listening to our prologue episode first. This is the story of two women's journey through spiritual abuse and escaping from toxic church culture while finding hope in Christ. Sometimes it's just the facts, and if you get offended by it, that's that's a you issue. Um, and if, if we can't be mature enough to have these conversations, even if some of the topics are difficult, then shame on us. Our previous episode... <laughs> We talked about, we had a, a really crappy year of death, and it just was a very dark time um, within the church body. And I hope we've, we've done a good job of kind of like setting the stage for like this quiet infighting that had kind of started, um, the grumbling amongst the soldiers, I guess you could say. And then you throw on all of these deaths and tragedies on top of it. And so it felt like everyone was just in like this really like depressed phase. So <laughs> we are planning for this retreat. Um, Charlotte does her typical, like, I'm going to talk to a few people, the secret planning before the planning planning. And she had approached me to help her lead this retreat. I was flattered. I was excited. I think some of it was um, a way to distract me from the things that I was not allowed to be doing in the office. Um, I was slowly kind of being pushed out of the office and Charlotte comes to me and reminds me that I was called to serve in women's ministry and that is why I left youth. And I remember thinking like, well, yeah, and I tried that and I tried to be a speaker and it just didn't work for me. And so maybe being more on the admin side would just be so much better for me. And like, I remember thinking that this was such a positive thing, but like now, like it's hearing the words come out of, of my mouth, it's just so, it just no, it's so all crap bad. because like, like we're going to remind you that you, you signed up to be in women's ministry. Um, you can't be in youth in the wake of that young couple passing away my husband and I did have conversations of like, do we need to go back into youth group and help these kids through this tragedy? Um, and we were told, you know, no, no, thanks. We got it. And then they bring in the, the condescending guy and he becomes like the wannabe pastor. And so it was like, well, 
we don't want you to go back to youth. So we really need you to focus on women's ministry. We know you really want to be in the office, but we really don't want you there because um, when it comes down to it, you're mouthy and you're not cute. And so the girl who's going to giggle at Tom's jokes and look appealing, like Tom wants her in the office. He doesn't want me in the office. And so we need to find something for you to do. So I think Charlotte drew the short straw and had to take Amanda. It's so funny. And we had to. I think it's so funny how you're like, well, I tried this whole speaking thing and it didn't work out. Instead of like, (laughs) I ran my mouth and I got in trouble and I wasn't allowed to speak again. When actually you're like, you're an amazing public speaker. And like, anytime that you have gotten up and taught and talked, like, I have learned so much. And it was something that always confused me because I was like, Amanda is so great at this. And then like, you wouldn't do it. Like, and I was always like, why? Like, why is, why can we not get, cause I like, we need Amanda. We need Amanda. We need Amanda. And we could never get Amanda. It's like you were cost too much to book to any of our events. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cost well, funny cause- was my mouth. That was what I charged. <laughs> But I always sat at Charlotte's table and I would always say, Amanda, this, Melissa, this, they should be doing this. They're so great. Remember when they did this? And it was always shut down. And I never could understand why Melissa could sometimes speak, but she had to have been on very good behavior. Melissa was allowed to talk. And this (laughs) retreat is what revealed to me that... I was handled in the way of, I did a very good job. And if you gave me like, this is my, this is, this is the ADHD world. You gave me the boundaries. I was really good at working within those boundaries. I mean, even to the point where I bought a lecture from Tom that he spewed at me of like, God gives you exactly what you need inside this little space and you need to fill up that space and just do everything within that space. And I know you're frustrated because you feel like you, you need to be expanded, but it just means you haven't filled up the space yet. And when you've done everything within this space, it'll expand and then you'll have more room to, and then you just stay within that, stay in that confined, like, right? Like I'm dumb because he flat out directly told me like, look, here's your box. I want to put you in a box. (laughs) Stay in it. You do X, Y, Z and just keep doing X, Y, Z and just keep doing X, Y, Z until we tell you, you can do something different. And once we tell you, you could do something different, then you can do A, B, C and X, Y, Z, but only do those things. I am. I'm highly offended right now because I thought that was my special lecture, Melissa. I got no. the same lecture. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I, I took it too. I, I got the same. God will expand you when he's ready. That Just sit why... down and do X, Y, Z and nothing else. Did have to clean toilets for Enjoy. a season. But gosh, I found the same amount of joy scrubbing that toilet as I did singing on stage. I think every woman who had to serve at Come As You Are, like, once you reach, like, a certain, like, serving threshold, you were cleaning toilets. Because don't get too proud of yourself. Go clean the toilet. But um, this retreat, so I was not, I wasn't allowed (laughs) to speak at this retreat. And... It was guys to me as you can either lead worship or you can speak, but you can't do both because that's too much and you won't be able to handle them both. And so like spiritually draining and like, they don't want you to drop the ball on what, like you need to focus on one thing. So either lead worship or speak, but you can't do both. And I feel like in the context of worship, Melissa speaking about death and divorce and division and devastation and all of these heavy topics that we were talking about at this retreat, you're either going to get 
I'm going to be like Amanda, never be allowed to speak again if you give me a microphone <laughs> in the context of speaking. But if you give me a microphone in the context of leading worship, anything and everything that I say about these topics is going to be focused on turning back to worshiping God. And it wasn't until I was planning for this episode that that even became clear that I was like, oh my gosh, because how come like, I mean, it's good. I got to tell you, if somebody was going to sit down and strategically figure out how to get me to conform and how to get me to not run off the rails and be like, like I do. I mean, you listen to this podcast, you listen to me <laughs> run off the rails. Um, it was get me to lead worship, get me to lead worship in a whole focus on horrible things that go on in life. And what am I going to speak about? I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking yeah. the stuff I would say if I was up there talking. Yeah, and that's so, why we manipulated you into be, being yeah. a MC. That's okay. That's what I'm gonna yep. do for the rest of my life. That's my new. That's <laughs> my new ambition in life. <laughs> Just hire me as an MC. I'm great fun. But that was a positive manipulation yeah. on my part because I really knew it would be fantastic. But, so, like you said, like we we're covering these really heavy things because we really did have a really heavy crappy year and when we started planning I was like we need to address these things like we can't just keep going up the mountain and being like our God is an awesome God and we all just love <laughs> Jesus and come home happy like this has been a horrible year like we need to address this and we need to actually talk about this and this was me attempting to try to do something purposeful, um, but it still, like, yeah, sucked. I did not. We really didn't truly help people. We still just, like, threw Jesus's <laughs> yeah. name on it. Like, I but wanted... we came close. This we, was I know. Yes. Close. Okay, we so for our close. listener, so you have to understand that this big... is one of my favorite yes. retreats, and I loved every moment of it. <laughs> and anytime Brandy or Amanda are like, oh my gosh, that was awful. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was wonderful. I loved it. But, um... Well, I liked the yeah. setup of it. I, like, this was my big idea. We're dealing with all of this heavy crap. Um... Not every woman has dealt with all of these things. And so if we have an entire retreat about all of these horrible things that have happened and we we make the ladies who haven't experienced it listen to it, it's just going to, everyone's going to leave depressed. And the goal is the Jesus high, right? Like that's the goal. You drive down the mountain with the Jesus high. So my big plan was that we're not going to break out in those little like discussion groups which by the way charlotte put together herself and so she could orchestrate we've talked about this before you know put together the little groups that she wants put together we weren't going to do that instead we had like i think like five or six things of like heavy things that someone has experienced so death division depression, divorce they were all uh, disease. depression yeah they all started with a, a d mm -hmm. disease yes thank you so they all started with a d so you could pick i think you had to pick three so you picked which three sessions you wanted to go to so these ladies who were doing these they basically were sharing their testimonies um one woman had lost her husband so she talked on that um, you know, there was a woman who had gone through a divorce, so she talked on that. And so, um, they shared their testimony three times in three different sessions. And then the women who attended the retreat could pick which sessions they wanted to go to like a, like conference or a retreat or something that you would go to where you choose, you choose you your know, own adventure. You pick what sessions you want to go to. Yeah. And then the main like where we all come together in the big main room, the main um, sessions were all meant to be, how do we move past this? So we've, we've talked about all of this heavy crap and now we're going to have women share how to move past all of this stuff. Um, the family the, of the young couple who passed away, they 
shared with like how do we move past it and like they've even come back after we've all left the church and have said like we were in no place to be sharing like we were yeah. we were having to they were just as much of having to put on it the show as February the rest of us were. when this young couple passed away it was may and by May, by yep, May the Day. mom is standing up at retreat and talking about how do you get past a yeah. teenage daughter. Yeah. Teenage. Yeah. We forget that she yeah. wasn't an adult. Because yeah. Because we treated her like an adult. But I remember they talked about a book. And, of course, I was like, oh, I'll download that real quick, whatever. And I remember reading it and being like, this is like pick up your cross. There's no instruction of what's really, it's all just vague. I mean, these people were holding it together the best they can, but like, it was in no way, shape, or form, or, well, well, no way, shape, or form pretty. Like, when you walk alongside, because like I said, we worked with them, and yes, was this woman holding it together? Yeah, she was doing everything in her bit of power to hold her family together, to hold her business together. Um, and I mean, yes, was she a pillar of strength, but was she by any means like, okay. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but no, like it's horrible that she felt that she had to, to be all that she could be because of this, some narrative that's not even, even true. Like it, it's not given space to heal, not given space to recover, not given space and actual help, you know, and I, I know that, that they've gotten some real legitimate help outside of this now, but I just think about, well, just how effed up is that, that the pastor and his wife put them yeah. in that position? I have something to add. <laughs> So this is my first retreat. I am like so excited. I get a freaking sweatshirt. I want <laughs> a dang sweatshirt so bad. So I am so excited. I do not like the setup. Uh, it's too much for me. And I don't like the topics. I don't want to do it. And so... And you mean you don't want to talk about your feelings, Brandy? Exactly. Yeah, I don't want to talk about any of this. I don't want to share any information. I don't like retreat really when it comes down to it. It's too like girly. You just want to. You just want to eat the snacks and wear this t-shirt and not Hang have out with my friend. Yeah, I, and everyone always said I should go to men's retreat and I do better. But the other problem was they were outside and I don't want to go outside either. <laughs> But this being my first one, and you guys might not realize this, there is an air of absolute excitement the evening before this woman speaks because she goes and changes her clothes and there is a buzz going around the room that this woman is going to speak. It is like... Beth Moore is coming. I am not kidding. Yeah. This happens only with certain people in the church when they speak. It would also happen with Melissa. But it would, we, some people would try to shut that down. Like, cause we don't want to build Melissa up too much. We got to keep her under the thumb. But this woman, I was like, holy crap, I paid this, I got a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, I'm eating snacks, and I get to watch Come As You Are's Beth Moore. And yeah. so I think it that's very important, too, of why this woman had to hold it together, because she had all yeah. of this on her shoulders as well uh -huh. um, that she was carrying of being super spiritually mature, a leader in the church, someone you go to with a problem. Um, I mean, now that I think about it, I think not long after this happened, I think 
Jason and I were sent to them for problems we were having and Jason yeah. was going to go work that's... there. So like they never got a chance to Yeah, no that's such a valid breath. point though, but yeah. like that it, it speaks to such a bigger picture of like like exactly which there's an expectation put on these people because they are spiritually mature, spiritual leaders. They're people. I mean, and you see this with any type of leadership within a church of like Give your leaders a second to be human. Give your, your your leaders a second to go through what they're going through. Like, and it's okay to, it, it goes on both sides. One, why do we feel like it's not okay to say, Hey, I can't, I can't be there. I'm not going to show up. You're probably not going to see me for six months because I gotta, I gotta get over this or whatever. Like we don't feel like we can sit down and rest. So that's one side of it. And the other side of it is that there's, people nobody is saying hey you shouldn't do this you don't need to speak you don't need to you know be at retreat you don't need to come every sunday you don't need to continue to serve i'm not speaking about this this person specifically i mean this is a bigger problem of like burnout why we cause burnout we have this expectation that you can't stop you can't rest mm -hmm. you can't take a break you're going to be in children's ministry till you die and but if you're burnt out then you must not have enough faith and so then you just keep going and then we wonder why we have the problems that we have. Well, and you're not going to step down or show any sign of weakness either, because then you're going to talk to like, them. And, like yeah. like and if you're the, and if you're the person to bring up, like you should take a break. Like if you're that person, like then you're ostracized. Why are you telling them? to stop serving? Why are you telling them this is what they need to be doing? This is how you draw right. closer to God. What's next? Are you going to tell them to stop reading their like, Bible? It's insane to me. It's absolutely mm -hmm. insane to me that even in the face of losing a child, you can't say, Hey, I need a minute and I can't do this. Like that's just, it's just disgusting, but get back to retreat. Cause this was my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so this was my big plan, right? And we had all of these new people come like, like Brandy, you said this was your first retreat. This was the first retreat for a lot of people. And so there was discussion that some ladies felt like this, the typical offering of what we offered for t-shirts was old lady-ish. And so... I set out to offer more contemporary style choices. Um, we still had the, the regular t-shirt and the long sleeve t-shirt and the hoodie, but then like we added in a jacket and then I found like this really like cool, thin, like baseball style shirt, um, that we offered as well. And a lot of the younger women liked that stuff. The old ladies were really upset. Um, but I really poured everything into this t-shirt design idea because I was trying to stay on Charlotte's good side. She asked me to help her lead. Oh my gosh. I am so like, she chose me. She picked me like, oh my goodness. I feel so honored. And the year before, I think I signed up the year before to design this shirt. And it was like me and one other lady. And then that lady like dipped like halfway through. So I ended up designing the shirt myself. And that was the brown shirt that everyone was mad because it was brown and it was ugly. But like we were trying to like pick colors we hadn't already had before because that's how you remember the retreats. Like, oh, this was the one with the pink shirt or the- <laughs> Yeah, the amount you know, of conversations that we've had shirt trying the, to figure out what yeah. year these things happened. And you're like, no, that was the one that you yeah. wanted. It was always about the shirt. Well, exactly. And so like, that's how you, you knew. And like, honestly, that's how you start to remember like, it was the red shirt. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, okay. So that's, we did this that year. And so, um, this was the year of the gray and the purple shirt. It was gray. And then the, all the writing was purple. And I, I create this design where I have like this rubble that is almost like a castle that has like fallen in on itself. 
at one end and then at the other end is the cross a beautiful ornate cross and in between in cursive writing connecting the two it says ruins to I gotta redemption tell you, it was um and it was edgy <laughs> it was edgy <laughs> <laughs> like i was i was trying to, for like i was trying to do something like with symbolism and charlotte hated every second of it she hated every second of it and like i would in the moment i was getting the vibe that like she hated this she didn't want to do this she had to go with me to the t-shirt shop to talk to the guy about the design to pick out the shirts like she had to go with me for everything but she hated every second of it and i couldn't put my finger on why because if i would like check with her for like affirmation she'd be like well you're the leader do whatever you think is best um and i remember just kind of like having this weird like okay you're saying you trust me and you want me to make the decision but you're clearly not happy with my decision but you're not going to tell me you're not happy with my decision and it really wasn't until like we were planning out this episode that i was like oh yeah she had she hated every second of it she wanted more than anything to jump in and be like we're not doing that we're doing it the way we've always done it we're having an old lady design with just words that don't mean anything and that's what we're going to put on a plain shirt and they're going to be stiff and feel like you're wearing cardboard <laughs> because that's what we want and she couldn't do that because we needed to give Amanda something to do. So this was my big giant something to do. And I was so excited and I took this seriously. Like I took this so seriously. I am the leader. I am being held doubly accountable for everything that happens at this retreat because my name is on there as leadership. And it comes down to, we are picking the ladies who are going to speak into these things. And this woman comes and she's like, I really feel like I want to speak. She had gotten a divorce. She had been living with her boyfriend. She found Jesus. She moved out of living with her boyfriend and moved in with her parents. She's a grown adult. And like, she really did have a good testimony that fit this retreat and Charlotte was like nope she's no and I was like why not and she's like no absolutely not and so I was prepared to tell this lady no sorry we already have enough speakers but then Charlotte says well we're gonna have this other lady come in and she's gonna speak on a different um topic and this lady um we're gonna call her like Charlotte's pet because she, this woman can come and go. She does not serve anywhere. She disappears for months, sometimes years on end. Um, she's been married and divorced multiple times. And she just kind of shows up whenever she feels like it. And Charlotte lets her speak. And we have these women who are active in the church, serving in the church, dedicated, showing up to everything. And we're telling them no. And this woman always gets told yes. And it's annoying as hell. And I question Charlotte. I give her pushback. Why does she get to do it? When we, she hasn't been a part of this church for three years at this point. She's, hasn't been around she wasn't here for any of this devastating year that we all just lived through. Why does she get to come and speak? But this woman, you're telling her no. And Charlotte and I argued, and this is really honestly one of the first times that I like stood up to Charlotte and was like, why are you doing this? And basically when it came, what it came down to was, okay, fine. You get to keep your girl and I'll keep my girl is kind of how Charlotte fixed that problem. It was all carefully orchestrated. I think the only reason that woman was allowed to speak is so that I would shut up and let Charlotte's pet speak. And I remember feeling 
like Brandy, I don't know if you remember me saying, like I said it for years, like I'm going to be held accountable for that someday. I'm going to stand before oh, yeah. the Lord and I'm, they're going to say, why did you let Charlotte's pet speak? And I will have to say, because I didn't have the, uh, I wasn't bold enough to speak for you, Lord. And I am <laughs> sorry. And I, w I was so ashamed for so many years that as the leader, I was convinced that I had heavenly repercussions coming to me for allowing that to happen because my name was on there as the co -lead. Wow. Yes, you did say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and well, and it's almost because we repeat ourselves a lot because we want someone to tell us it's okay. Mm -hmm. And then we also have our acquaintances that are now our family and our close friends. So we're trying to share and make people understand and honestly just try to not make ourselves feel crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. And that's why something completely different with retreat. So... <laughs> Brandy hated it. I This was my big plan. So, Melissa, you said you liked it. What did you like about this? Retreat? Oh, my gosh. But if you think about it, like, we talked about this retreat in every planning meeting from this point on. It was like, but well, do you remember when we did this? I, maybe it was just me. I was so – so this retreat no. – okay, so a couple of things. Number one, this is the first time – that we are going to talk about topics that you can't bake a casserole to fix. Because if you hang around me long enough, eventually I'll be like, you can't bake a casserole for it. Um, in my origin story and how I got to come as you are, I talked about like going through divorce in a church and, and the situations and the problems that I've had in my life are not problems that you get a meal train going. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that. Cause they're they trust. I've had people, I've, that is a very needed service for people when they are in upside down world changing situations. Like taking that off their plate is, is a blessing and a half, but it doesn't mean that we need to do it for every little thing. And there's situations that come up in life that you can't bake a casserole for it. Like you have to get in the trenches with somebody if you're going to help. And this is when we talk about having like, trained professionals and the lack thereof in certain church circles where we think that if I just have a Bible and I know Jesus, that I'm now qualified, you know, to help somebody through addiction. And this is the very first time as a women's ministry that we are going to dive deep and talk about real issues, real problems, real things. We're talking about death. We're talking about divorce. We're talking about, um, division and disease. And we're going to talk about these things and we're not even going to talk about, it. we're going to have studies and small groups about them. And so this retreat is like the pinnacle of like everything that I had ever wanted to speak about and be a part of in women's circles. Cause I don't like the fluff and stuff. I, I want to get into the nitty gritty and get real help and real healing and, and get to a real place with God. And that's what I thought this was. And so that's why this was like, at that time, this is what this was. This was as close to where we needed to be as we got in the entire time I was there. Well, and so like, we're going to talk about real things and we're going to actually like have things to actually help people. But in all reality, all we're doing is we're having women share their testimonies and we're going to sing worship songs about it. And we're going to have someone who we're going to have women who really went through some gnarly crap in their, their life. And they've had the worst year of their life and they haven't been allowed to process that or seek actual help from any sort of trained professional in any way, stand there and tell us that, well, I just prayed and now I'm not sad no more. And like, that was our solution and how we were going to really, truly help women yeah. was we're going to say, we basically, all we did was we acknowledged that yep. crap happens. Yeah. I'm not saying we did anything good about it, but it is the <laughs> closest. 
in, in the time of come as you are. It is the closest that we got to even doing anything remotely right in women's ministry. I, yeah. I, I do. I will say this. Like, I do feel like it was a turning point, though, which ultimately, like, when you try to back things up and find the root of things, like even this podcast and what led to us leaving the church and how the three of us became friends, that retreat was a pivotal moment in it because it was something it's, it's like, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. And I think for all of us individually, we knew what we wanted, but we didn't quite know exactly. And that retreat opened our eyes to, we are people who want to talk about the real and the raw. And it might have been handled, you know, in a very, you know, snowflake and rainbow kind of way. But ultimately, it was driven by a heart of people who really do want to walk through the trenches with people. And I think it's funny because I've led a lot of retreats and been and participated in leadership of retreats. And this retreat, I was led the worship team. I was involved in almost every meeting that there was um, for this retreat. And what I think is really funny about that is, Amanda, I don't ever remember being in a meeting with you. And I was, yeah, I was the you were like, of it. like you literally just said that Charlotte was and like, so- you're in charge. And I don't think we ever had a conversation about the worship or but I was involved in every aspect of planning. Like there's things that I'm like, I was there. I planned that. I was involved with that. I had an opinion about that. I made that out. Like I was in every single meeting for this retreat. So again, when we say to keep us separated was orchestrated, like anything that involved you, Charlotte said, I will go to, there's no use having two leaders at all these meetings. So I will go to these meetings and you go to those meetings and then you and I will come together and we will share notes. So I led some of the speakers, the ones that Charlotte didn't want to deal with, um, the ones that were my idea of this is who I think we should have speak. I dealt with them. Um, I dealt with registration t-shirts, um, designing the notebook covers, all the administrative stuff, right? Then Charlotte did worship and room assignments and all of that type of stuff. That's crazy. It just, it boggles in such a small environment, a small amount of people and be so heavily involved with every detail and never have a conversation. Well, and then the next year it changes because then I deal with all yeah. those things. But well, you, not- you are the chosen one. You have not proven that you are mouthy in a public setting. You're mouthy, but you're mouthy one on one. You're not mouthy to the masses. And I don't want the microphone. Yeah. I've made it clear, please don't make me talk in the microphone. So Amanda said that I hated this retreat. (laughs) And this is my first one. So there's a love-hate going on because I like the fact that I get to leave my kids and my husband, go up to the mountains, stay with my friends. This is the height of mom's group. So we're all sharing rooms. It's super exciting. I got my shirt. I got my snacks. I will suffer through worship. (laughs) And I will get a prayer partner, exchange a candle. But that's all I'm really about. And I don't really know what to expect for the groups. Amanda's talked about it. I don't really know. So when we get up there, um, I do help with registration, all of that. And then uh, there's a woman that has a baby that the baby won't go to anyone except for her or I. And it said she needs a break because um, her husband's not very helpful, whatever. But 
Well, actually, you know what? I don't even think that would have ever been said. I think behind the scenes, we said her husband wasn't helpful. We all, mom's group said it to each other. Yeah. But husbands weren't really required to be helpful because you're the one breastfeeding. You get to stay at home. So you get to take care of the baby 24-7. So we get there. And at first, I'm at a table with, like, every my peers and first we do worship which i'm like okay it's not too bad melissa's not making me stand for like four hours because really i would have loved worship if i could have just sat and watched i don't want to sing along (laughs) i don't want to sway and sing along so i'm fine for a little bit And I like when Melissa talks. And that was one of the things is people really did love how worship went. They loved what you spoke about. Um, It really worked well. And we took things from that years later and used it for other things. Um, People were excited about the groups, the topics. They were super into it. So what ends up happening is I'm like, I'm not going to one of these stupid groups. So I never pick, (laughs) I never pick my groups. And Charlotte's starting to know who I really am at this point. And so I'm like, I'm not picking groups. I'm not doing it. And Charlotte doesn't do it either. And so then I use the excuse, I'm going to take the baby so she can go do the groups. So I have the baby and Charlotte and I hang out. And we observe everyone and what's going on and are around tables and whatever. And so, of course, I start saying what is not right and what's not working. And Charlotte doesn't like anything that has happened for this retreat because when it comes down to it, we have a model that we want to use. The model is not broken. We want to do it, execute it, get in, get out. So we can say, check, we did it. We had women's retreat. Because it's a lot of work to do this. And so I start saying, like, worship's too long. We shouldn't be doing worship this long. And, you know, um, the groups. Why do we have to have 400 groups? Why can't we? I told Amanda we don't need 400 groups. All we needed was (laughs) to all stay in the same room. If you want to go in the rooms and do that, whatever. So... I'm sorry that I undermined everything you guys said, but I was still doing it again because it was annoying. <laughs> well, but like, honestly, it just, it fed into that narrative of like, well, Amanda's controlling. Amanda has to have her weight. This was all Amanda's idea. Um, but honestly, like, I think this is an important, like, mile marker to put a post in because it's going to come up later where Charlotte does try to come between you and I and our friendship in a very severe way, like to the point where we are told we can no longer be friends. We can no longer hang out with each other. And I think this is probably the origin of that where, because she knew you would say like, I don't like what Amanda's doing. Right, but she didn't know I'd already told you to your face. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And I told you I'm not going to a group and I'm not participating. And I don't, why am I, I don't want to talk about divorce. I don't want to, you know, and, you know, it wasn't, I mean, we would battle it out on what we were going to do with ministry. Yeah. And so. And that, and I. Yeah, I think that's what she just didn't re- like. She didn't realize she you did. and I were having these conversations one on one, just the two of us. And there would be times where we would both tell each other, "Like that's stupid. We're not doing that." Like mm-hmm. so many times, we would get into arguments with each other over what we were doing in ministry. But I think she thought that like you were telling her that like other people were coming and feeding her information, right? right. Well, and even, I mean, I would go to 
someone else in on the worship team be like, we don't need to sing a song that lasts 45 minutes. And that person would, you know, she lived for that. She wanted to cry. And, you know, so then I'd go to Melissa and tell her we don't need to be doing that. <laughs> you know, so I was always very upfront with my opinion of what we should be doing. And that's kind of what got me in trouble down the road is because I felt that I could go and say things directly to people. And it's not that I expected everything to go my way, but I was like, you have to, because we all have blinders on too. So you have to take your blinder off and think about the big picture of what everybody wants. And well, that's what's exhausting. And that, Melissa has said it before of like, deny yourself and you know, die to yourself and all of these things like, yeah. And so you think you're helping people by pointing out the, you know, the splinter in their eye and like, yes, I've, I've examined the plank in my own, but like you really have this splinter and you really need to look at that. And so in reality, we all just ran around and we're like telling each other like, what we wanted to happen, but like we were trying to make it seem as though we were helping them see what God wanted. Oh yeah. And I was never good at that because I would, I couldn't fake it that much. So I always came across as I'm just giving it to you straight. Yeah. And certain people could handle that and others couldn't. But what's funny, what comes out of this retreat is I don't want to do this as a whole big group. It's too exhausting. It's too much work. Some people like it. Some people don't. Um, this is where the whole red tent come to the table idea is actually born. And we all, I talk about it with both of you separately. And we can't for years quite figure out how to get it to where we want it to go. Cause my whole thing is you want a space to cry on stage and sing. I will give you that space. Let's just not do it here. You know? So it's just funny how everybody had their part to play and how this would go down. But then we always reverted back to the original formula. Yeah, And because I, uh, I really like a pattern and a formula, that's why I was really good at putting on retreat because I did exactly what Charlotte wanted. Burning Butterflies is a listener supported podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our amazing supporters on Patreon. Follow the link in our show notes to learn how you can become a Patreon supporter too. Supporters get exclusive access to bonus content each month, including outtakes, cut content, and supporter-only episodes. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating on your listening platform. Burning Butterflies is a production of Asha Media. Thank you for listening.